One of the challenges that I've found when trying to review spinnakers is that unless you're one of the first people to cover a particular watch, there just always seems to be less interest in those videos. And I think it's because people just seem to have their mind made up from the previous reviews. Yet even with that, I do like to occasionally take a look at one, just to kind of get a sense of where the brand is headed. A couple of years ago, it seemed like they were really focused on lower spec dive style watches. Yet over the last year, it seems like they've really started listening to what people want by introducing more sapphire, better loom, bracelets instead of leather, and some actual divers. Now, they don't always get it right, but that's one of the reasons I like to see for myself, just to get an idea how the brand is evolving. And the watch we're looking at today, the Amalfi Diver, I think is a watch that gets a lot of things right. And I think if you were looking for a watch that was more playful with a lot of color, this would be one to check out. Except there is one big issue. And by big, I mean size. This really is a big boy at 46 millimeters wide, and it has a 24 millimeter lug width. And that by itself is gonna cause this to be a pass for most people. And usually I'd include myself in that as well, which is why I was a bit hesitant when they asked if they could give me this to review. But what changed my mind was just the colorful nature of a few of the different versions, and especially the light blue one. And I just loved how they integrated that into the bezel. So I decided it was something I wanted to see for myself. Now with the crown, we're looking at a 50 millimeter wide watch, and it also has a lug to lug of about 52. So overall it's a bit square, but it is a big square. And you can definitely feel that size as it does weigh 250 grams with the bracelet. So I'm glad to see Spinnaker is using more bracelets, but perhaps this is one time that they should have stuck to something else just to lose a little bit of that weight. But at least they kept the height relatively in check at 14.8. I think the last watch I looked at that was close to this size was actually 17 millimeters tall. The Amalfi has a stainless steel case and it actually has a pretty good finishing. It's mostly brushed, with the exception of the top of the crown guards and these chamfered edges, which for the most part just seem to highlight the edge of the case and kind of act to frame the dial and bezel, which is really what your eye is going to be drawn to here anyways. Now you also have the typical sign screw down crown at the 3, and that does go along with the 200 meters of water resistance. And I'd say the crown is normal sized, but because of the size of the case I do think it looks a little small and kind of winds up being really tucked into those crown guards. It's a little hard to use with gloves, but otherwise okay. There's an exhibition case back on the rear, and I do think a solid case back would have been a better choice if they could use that just to make it a little thinner. But otherwise I think it looks pretty good, and I really like the blue aluminum plate on the rotor. It just gives it a nice splash of color. The bezel is 120 click, and there's a pretty good action and always enough grip to be able to turn it easily. There's just a touch of back play, but it's not too bad. And the insert is aluminum, but it's also one of the signatures of the design, where it has this inverted font for the first 20 minutes. And on the black and blue models, I think that's silver, which I think is overall okay but I really do like the more colorful application on the light blue and orange versions, as it really plays with that black bezel. And I also think there's a bit of a missed opportunity here in terms of loom. Now, there is a nice loom pip at the top, but I think if they had applied loom to the entire bezel, especially that inverted section, it would have been a really cool effect. You also have a large flat sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating, and it's actually pretty effective when you combine that with the matte dial underneath, which I think really comes through in these images. This was actually a pretty easy watch to capture, and I think that dial just brilliantly comes through at almost every angle. Either way, the dial here is really well done. It's multi-layered with the sunken middle section that's just wide enough for that oversized hour hand which is something I really do like here. It just seems to give that hour hand its own space, and then lets the minute hand just seem to hover over the raised platform underneath it. There's also the typical text in the middle, but for better or worse, the hour hand seems to cover up a big chunk of it most of the time. The silver indices are applied, but they're not too tall, but they do have a decent height, 
And I think when you combine that with the multi-layered dial and the chapter ring, it just really gives the Amalfi a good sense of depth. And the indices in the hands always seem to have just a touch of green glow to them, as there is a good amount of loom applied here. There's also a framed date window at the 3, and I do like how they cut out some of that platform to make space for it. On some of these macro shots, it does seem to look a little close to the center of the dial. But you really got to remember how big this thing is, and I think when you zoom out it does look more normal. Now, the Amalfi definitely isn't a beautiful or classic looking diver, but it's more of a fun and functional one. Because of the color choices used for the hands and the matte color on the dial, I think it's always just really easy to read. And many divers do tend to design the dial and the hands in such a way to just put more emphasis on the minute hand. As if you're actually diving, the most important thing is the minute hand in its relation to the bezel. So they usually accomplish this by making the hour hand smaller or less relevant. And I think the best example of this is going to be on the Omega Plowprof, of which Spinnaker kind of copied for their Duma. Now, while this is great for diving, I don't really think it's good for everyday life. So I like that the Amalfi here accomplishes that as well, but it doesn't accomplish this by making the hour hand smaller. Rather, it gives it more of a duller matte texture and kind of isolates it in its own space which in contrast makes the red minute hand here just really pop and draws your eyes towards it. Yet by doing it this way, it still leaves a very nice large hour hand that makes the watch easy to read overall. And that overall effect is actually something I really like. I just wish the watch was a bit smaller. Now as for the loom, the loom is actually pretty good, and I think it's probably the best spinnaker I've seen for loom. I wound up setting this on a 3 hour time lapse, and you can see the standard turtle to the right. So the loom on the dial here fades out just after that turtle, yet the hands, those hands are amazingly strong. And at the end of the test here, they're the only things that are clearly visible. So a big thumbs up to Spinnaker for doing it right here. Now movement wise, we do have your standard Seiko NH35 workhorse. So you got your standard 40 hour power reserve, hacking and hand winding. And price wise, I do think it's a little on the high end for that Seiko movement, but it's definitely not unheard of. The bracelet is a simple three link with solid end links and a milled push button clasp. And overall, I think it's actually a pretty good quality bracelet with a nice brush finish throughout. While it starts at 24 millimeters, it does quickly taper down to 22 so you don't completely feel like you're being restrained. It also wears pretty decently for its size, and was actually pretty comfortable, almost surprisingly so. And for me, the bigger issue I think was more the weight. It's not bad at first, but it's definitely something you notice after a while. Which lastly brings us to price and value, and even with the discount here, I think it's just a tad bit high, but not completely out of line. For a comparison, you can just look at the Zello Swordfish for about 10 bucks more with the same movement. Now, personally, I like the Swordfish better, but if you're looking spec to spec, I think they're fairly comparable. Overall, I actually like the design here, and it's not just because the minute hand looks like a red lightsaber. It's definitely not a classic looking diver, but something a bit more fun and funky. Not to mention, I think they did a good job on the loom but I don't really see myself wearing it too much. It's just a bit bigger and heavier than I'd prefer. If it was 42 millimeters, it might be a different story. So I think this is one that you really have to be looking for a larger watch in order to consider. But if you are, then it could be a solid option that has everything you want. At which point, I'd also suggest taking a look at Aragon. Most of their watches seem to be about 45 to 50 millimeters. And while most of them don't have sapphire, and I don't think the loom is quite as good, they do have some really cool, interesting designs. But let me know what you think about the Amalfi down below, or what do you think about larger watches? Most of the time I hear anyone say anything, they're usually complaining about them, so I'm just curious how much of an interest there is. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me.